good morning everyone so today we are going to discuss the solutions of the questions given in tutorial sheet 2 so the first question is prove that a graph with more than 6 vertices of odd degree cannot be decomposed into three disjoint paths so first let's see what it mean by decomposition so a decomposition of a graph is the collection of the edge disjoint subgraphs of G such that every edge of G belongs to exactly ones. So for example, if I draw this graph, then it has three edge disjoint paths. So such that the union of these paths is the original graph. But at the same time, none of the edge is repeated in one of the paths. So that's why they are edge disjoint. Let's see one more example. So this is K7. And we can see that they are edge disjoint subgraphs of K7. And now the problem is that a graph with more than 6 vertices of odd degree. 6 vertices of O degree cannot be decomposed into 3 disjoint paths. The problem is more easy to understand if we write down its contrapositive. So the contrapositive says that if a graph is decomposed into 3 paths then it has at most 6 vertices of O degree. And now the proof is quite trivial because it is decomposed into three paths so these three paths has six endpoints and these endpoints could have odd degree because in the when you draw a path then the endpoints have the odd degree yes when we decomposed into three paths then at most six endpoints are there which could have the odd degree and this proves the required result The next question says that how many labeled graphs on vertex set 1 to n are isomorphic to Cn. Here Cn is a cycle of length n. Yes, so total number of the permutations are n factorial. If I talk of C4, then total number of the permutations are 4 factorial, which is 24. Yes, we can easily write, that, write them down 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 4, 3 and so on. Now when I talk of C4, so 1, 2, 3, 4, this 1, 2, 3, 4 actually represent 1, 2, 3, 4, this permutation which means 1 is adjacent to 2, 2 is adjacent to 3, 3 is adjacent to 4. But at the same time it also represent 1, 4, 3, 2, the cycle in the anti-clockwise order which means 1 is adjacent to 4. 4 is adjacent to 3, 3 is adjacent to 2. Whichever permutation I write, I will have the same graph. So they are isomorphic graphs. But also I can change the starting and the ending point. So I can start with 2, 3, 4, 1. Or I can write it as 2, 1, 4, 3. Similarly 3, 4, 1, 2. Or 3, 2, 1, 4. And the last one is 4, 1, 2, 3 and 4, 3, 2, 1. It means that out of these 8 permutation, I just need 1 if I have to, if I need all non-isomorphic labeled graphs. And therefore, out of 24, if I divide it by 8, then there are 3 non-isomorphic labeled cycle graphs of length 4 and in case of cn it should be n factorial divided by 2n so this is how we get the number of non isomorphic labeled graphs labeled graphs labeled cycle graphs of order n The next one is a simple graph with n vertices is connected if it has more than n minus 1, n minus 2 by 2 edges. 
there are many approaches to solve this one one is induction but i am going to discuss the other approaches the first thing to observe here is that this number actually represents the number of the edges is in k n minus 1 now we have to prove that a simple graph is connected if it has more than these number of the edges yes so if we think of a disconnected graph and if we think of maximum number of the edges in disconnected graph one possibility is you consider a disconnected graph with two components k n minus 1 k 1 similarly you can think of k n minus 2 and k 2 k n minus 3 and k 3 and so on now observe here that if i have to look for the maximum number of the edges then in this part k n minus 3 and k 3 there are possibility to add three more edges from k 3 you make an vertex adjacent to any vertex of k n minus 3 in this there are two more possibility but in the first one there is only one possibility you make a vertex from k1 adjacent to any one of the vertex from k n minus 1 so only one edge can be added it means the maximum number of the edges in the disconnected graph is n minus 1 n minus 2 by 2 and these are the maximum number of the edges in a disconnected graph it means that if we add one more edge the graph becomes connected and this is why we can say that a graph is connected if it has more than n minus 1 n minus 2 by 2 edges one more approach is that we have did this result in the class that a graph with k components has at most n minus k n minus k plus 1 by 2 edges so if we consider two components then it has at most n minus 1 n minus 2 by 2 edges and these are the maximum number of the edges two components can have the same thing and therefore if we add an edge it becomes connected let g be a n minus 1 regular simple connected graph it means g here is k n so if for some n we decompose g into cycles of length 3 then prove that n minus 1 is equal to 6a which means 6 divides n minus 1 or 6 divides n minus 3 now what does it mean decompose into three cycles and what we are looking for we have to find this number of cycles in terms of the n because the number of the cycle is simply a positive integer so one thing is that in kn the number of the edges are n n minus 1 by 2 and if k if k is the number of the cycles then the total number of the edges are 3k because these edges are disjoint they have none of the edge in common so if for example there are two cycles and they are edge disjoint then you know that 2 times 3 is the number of the edges in this graph so this is one result the other result is again the cycles are disjoint so when they are disjoint in c3 each vertex has degree 2 so when they are disjoint the other possibility is that two cycles might be two or more cycles might be sharing a vertex in that case again you can observe that the degree of a vertex remains even so in kn the degree is n minus 2 and n minus 2 is always n minus 1 and n minus 1 is always even yes because it is always a multiple of 2 since g is decomposed into cycles of length 3 and each cycle in each cycle every vertex has degree 2 so from the first i can say that 3 divides n or 3 divides n minus 1 and from the second point i can say that 2 divides n minus 1 
so 3 divides n and 2 divides n minus 1 first case the other case is 3 divides n minus 1 and 2 divides n minus 1 the second case directly gives me 6 divides n minus 1 so this is what I am looking for and the next case 3 divides n and 2 divides n minus 1 so 3 divides 15 and 2 divides 15 minus 1 14 so this is same equivalent to 2 plus 1 divides 14 plus 1 the same as 3 divides n so both are representing the case 3 divides n which is 3 plus 3 divides n plus 3 or which is 6 divides n plus 3 or 6 divides n minus 3 doesn't matter so if 6 divides 15 plus 3 which is 18 it always divides 15 minus 3 which is 12 so the, the the remaining part is number theory part but the above part is very graph theoretical part we have seen the relation that what does it mean when we decompose into number of cycles and then what is the relation we are getting in n and the number of the cycles and from there we have the required result Determine the number of isomorphism classes of simple 7 vertex graphs in which every vertex has degree 4. So in this case, we need to find all non-isomorphic graphs of order 7 having degree 4. This is what we are looking for. Yes. Now we can also, we can easily try to draw them. But to save our time, we can think the other way around. Instead of looking for the graphs of order 7 having degree 4, we can think of their complement, which means we are looking for graphs of order 7 and degree 2, where it is more easy problem. And the solutions are C7 and C3 plus C4. And then you take their complements, so C1 bar and C3 plus C4 bar is the required answer. So sometimes complement is very important to use, especially if the problem looks very complex. So we can many times simplify it using the concept of complement. Yes. Which pair of the graphs are isomorphic? This you can try by yourself. If you see these two graphs, then you can see in the interior this is a cycle of length 5, then there is a cycle of length 10 and then there is a cycle of length 5. Similarly here in the interior there are cycle of length 5, 5 and 10. If I pull one of the cycles of length 5, for example this, 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 this and this, then it is exactly the same graph as the middle one. But this graph has a cycle of length 5, C5. So it is not bipartite. And we can observe that the first graph is bipartite. Try it by yourself. This is one of the, its partition into bipartite sets. Let P and Q be the maximum length paths in a connected graph G. Prove that P and Q have a common vertex. To prove this one, again we will use the concept of contradiction which means let P and Q do not have a common vertex. If they do not have a common vertex then this is how the P looks like and this is how the Q looks like. And their length is k. Now since the graph is connected then there must be some vertex here in P which is adjacent to some vertex in Q. Now in P this vertex divides P into two subpaths. Pick the larger subpath. So if you pick the larger subpath if length is at least k by 2 Similarly, in Q, 
pick the larger sub path its length is k by 2 and then consider the path like this so its length is at least k by 2 plus 1 plus k by 2 which is at least k plus 1 but we have assumed that p and q have maximum length k and we found a path of length k plus 1 which is a contradiction and therefore we started with a contradiction reached to a contradiction so we can say that p and q must have a common vertex so this is the last question it says that construct a simple connected graph of order 2n with degree sequence as given now when it says construct it means that you need to give some steps to construct a graph such that for any n it gives you the required graphs which means the graphs with the following degree sequence so one of the way is that consider the graph with the vertex at a1 a2 an and b1 b2 bn now say that ai is adjacent to bi if and only if i is less than equal to j for example consider a1 a2 a3 a4 b1 b2 b3 b4 and now i is less than equal to j so it means ai is adjacent to bj so a1 is adjacent to b1 b2 b3 b4 a2 is adjacent to b2 b3 b4 a3 is adjacent to b3 b4 and a4 is adjacent to b4 this gives me the graph here the degree sequences are 4 3 1 2 1 2 3 4 4 it means this is the graph with degree sequence 1 1 2 2 3 3 4 4 4 and now you can see that it can be easily generalized the same method work even you consider n as 100 or 1 million or whatever you want so this is what it mean if we say construct a simple graph with the specific requirement then you do not construct simply a graph for a particular value of n it should hold for all values of n so that's all from tutorial sheet 2 thank you very much for watching